oxygen as the inosilicate pyroxene group. Okay, the next type we're going to look at are sheet silicates, where the tetrahedral uh, silicas are linked to other silicas uh, in 2D sheets, okay? And they're also called phyllosilicates. So 2D sheets, okay? So let's look at how these work. Um, we could start with what we did above, uh, the same sort of geometry in a single plane. We have this sort of geometry of the tetrahedral groups that are linked together, like that. And then over here, like that. Okay, and then we just repeat the pattern. So now this line here goes down and we have another tetrahedra. And then over here, another tetrahedra. And then over here, another tetrahedra. And here. Okay, so it turns out the repeat for a unit cell would be, is uh, quite simple, and it looks like this. Huh? Um, it's going to go up here, and that cell has two silicas in it, like that, and it has one, two, three, four, five oxygens. So in these, the stoichiometry is two silicas to five oxygens. And a common mineral in the in simple phyllosilicate would be the serpentine group, which is, consists of uh, silica tetrahedral sheets. And it has a formula of Mg3, Si2O5. OH4. Okay. More complicated sheet silicates like micas, chlorite. Some of these tetrahedra have, in addition to silica, they also have aluminum in tetrahedral coordination. Okay. The last type of silicates we're going to look at are called framework silicates. Those are also called tectosilicates. And in this case, the silicate, silica tetrahedra are linked together in a 3D uh, network, which is difficult to illustrate on this 2D sheet of paper, but we'll give it a try. Here's one silica tetrahedra like that with four oxygens. And then in the center, is a silica, okay, in the center of that. And each one of the oxygens is shared. So this one's shared with another tetrahedra, like that. This is shared out here with another tetrahedra, like that. And this one is shared up here with another tetrahedra. In addition, the apex of this tetrahedra shares its oxygen with an overlying tetrahedra, okay? So that means that every one of the oxygens is shared between two silica tetrahedrons. So we have one silica shared with and two oxygen, and that's the stoichiometry. As an example of this, we have the common rock forming minerals, uh, including silica minerals quartz, which has the formula SiO2, and feldspars. So we'll look at, for example, N-member K feldspar would be K-A-L-S-I-3-O-8. And you can see again, aluminum plus silica is 4, oxygen 8, and we have the 1 to 2 stoichiometry. So in summary, the silicate minerals are classified based on how many silica tetrahedra are linked. They go from isolated tetrahedra of mesosilicates to doublets, to chains, single chains, double chains, 
and finally to ring silicates, sheet silicates, and then 3D framework silicates.